SpaceX's first try to launch the first full-scale test flight of the Starship rocket from Texas was cut short April 17th by a frozen valve in the pressurization system for the launch vehicle's first stage. The SpaceX launch team fully loaded roughly 10 million pounds of methane and liquid oxygen propellants into the nearly 400-foot-tall or 120-meter rocket on Monday, but after the valve problem cropped up, the launch attempt effectively became another countdown dress rehearsal. The countdown continued until T-40 seconds when SpaceX stopped the clock and began procedures to drain the rocket's voluminous propellant tanks. SpaceX technicians have spent the last couple of days working around the bottom of the Super Heavy booster using mobile lifts and booms to reach different parts of the nearly 30-foot diameter or 9-meter wide rocket. Working around the clock, in preparation for the next countdown, more than 200 tanker trucks were expected to deliver fresh liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen, and methane to the SpaceX launch site called Starbase. The nitrogen is used to chill the propellants to super cold temperatures before they are pumped into the rocket. The Super Heavy Booster's 33 engines will generate more than 16 million pounds of thrust at full throttle, making the Super Heavy and Starship vehicle the most powerful rocket in history, with about twice the thrust of NASA's Saturn V moon rocket from the Apollo program and the more recent Space Launch System moon rocket for the Artemis program. The Super Heavy will also surpass the thrust of the Soviet Union's N-1 launch vehicle, which had 30 engines with 10 million pounds of thrust, the N-1, however, never reached space on any of its four test flights between 1969 and 1972. SpaceX's behemoth stainless steel launch vehicle towers over the coastal wetlands and brush country of South Texas, just a few miles north of the Mexican border. The Super Heavy booster has grid fins and chines, or small aerodynamic protuberances, to help the rocket during descent back to Earth for recovery and reuse. A controlled propulsive water landing of the Super Heavy booster in the Gulf of Mexico is a goal for the upcoming test flight. Above Super Heavy sits the Starship vehicle itself, with articulating fins and heat shield tiles to protect the rocket's metallic structure from the scorching temperatures of re-entry back through the atmosphere. For the first integrated test flight of this new rocket, the Starship is just a prototype without any operational payloads to deploy into space. In fact, even if everything goes according to plan, the Starship will not reach orbital velocity and will instead re-enter and impact the Pacific Ocean north of Hawaii after nearly one full lap around the Earth. SpaceX eventually wants to recover and reuse both stages of the Starship rocket. The company has an ambition to eventually perform daily launches of this giant vehicle with launch facilities in Texas and Florida, either operational or under construction. Commercial satellites, such as those for SpaceX's own Starlink Internet Network, could be among the first payloads to fly on Starship. NASA also has a contract with SpaceX to develop a derivative of the Starship rocket as a human-rated lander for the Artemis moon program. That will require SpaceX to test novel and untried technology for in-orbit refueling. SpaceX says the first attempt to launch a Starship into space is, first and foremost, a learning exercise. The company is in the final stages of assembling new boosters and ships in Texas, and engineers will apply lessons learned from the first launch to these future test flights. There is a good chance something goes wrong before the test flight reaches its full 90-minute duration, according to company founder and CEO Elon Musk, who added, Excitement guaranteed.